This is something that I've discussed in my videos a long, long time ago when I first started experimenting with frame geometries, and I'm bringing it up again because it's once again become a topic that I'm beginning to deal with with some very, very high-level pilots. So we've been designing a new frame that we're hoping to make kind of our final frame, Pyroflip and I, and the Hyperlite brand, the Hyperlite series, and the Floss line. We've been trying to kind of finalize and finish this one frame that we can just hold on to for a long time because we don't see things changing in the frame department so much going forward. And so there has been this discussion whether an X or a stretched X or a large X or various geometries. And I have done tons of experimentation on this. And right up front, I'm gonna tell you a big, big disclaimer. Just because you fly a particular or you don't have a particular geometry does not mean that you're going to win or lose. In the same breath, I would say that the setup that you're using to fly 4S, 6S, 5S, whatever S and whatever setup, whatever motors, as long as it's competitive, you are competitive. It's primarily skill that's going to win you the race and the ability to actually finish the race. So if that wasn't clear, Everything that I'm discussing here is a matter of preference. It is not necessarily good or bad, and everybody is entitled to their own preference. And this is only my findings based on my own personal real-world research and discussing with a whole bunch of really, really top pilots. So this is what some really, really high-level pilots wanted. They said we want an X. We want something at least closer to an X. Now, there's a lot of problems with making a straight X racing frame in terms of uh, structural integrity and durability and weight and, and whatnot, which I'm not going to get into. And so what I did do is I gave them a very close to X, and this is what I gave them. And what happened was they said it was great for a while, and they flew it around, and um, everything was fantastic, and we were moving forward with things, and I was planning on offering two options, the close to X, the very, very close to X, and the stretched X. And then recently they more than one pilot said they actually don't like the way it flies. They actually prefer the Floss 2 to the new tight X geometry that I gave them. And so let's discuss what the differences are and why, what the rationale is for a stretch X to begin with. Let's back up for a second. I have to say the first person that figured this out and formally recognized that a stretched X has at least different characteristics than a regular X-frame is Brian Morris. I have to give him credit for that because he is definitely the first person that I know of that I've ever heard from to figure that kind of rationale out. And the theory as it stands today, which hasn't really changed since then, is that the front props, as you're moving forward through the air, the front props have, you know, they're sucking in air, they're blowing off thrust, and they're, whatever they're doing is in interfering with the rear prop's ability to function. Now, this has nothing to do with battery placement, nothing to do with anything else. It's purely a matter of interaction between the front discs and the rear discs. And what has been found is that when you have a stretched X or a longer X, or just the separation between front and back is longer, you are moving the rear discs out of the path of the front discs. Now, this might be a little confusing to people, so let me very, very easily explain what that means. So let's say that this is the front of the quad, that's the back of the quad, and it's actually an H quad. And you can see that the, the this dimension is a little bit wider than this dimension here. So let's just say that this is the front. So if you're moving this way, in this forward direction, if you look at the tilt, look look right here, right here between the prop separation. So this is about 15 degrees tilt. And when you start tilting up, you see the separation of the props increase, but not really by much. And that's the, that's the dilemma, that's the issue exactly. So as you tilt up, you don't see a lot of separation between the front and the rear props. Now let's look at a stretch X design and, and take a look at that again. In the same 15 degree angle, you already see far more separation between the front and rear than you saw on the other one. Let's put them side by side. Both of them are about the same angle. Look at the separation between front and back. Now let's tilt them both up. Let's start with the stretch X. Watch this, watch this spacing distance here and just look at it from a, you're looking at a 2D image from a 2D video. Watch what happens as I tilt it up. Look how fast that space grows. That space grows really quickly. So essentially at zero degrees tilt, you ha will have no separation, but immediately once you start getting just a little bit of tilt on the quad, you start getting a lot of separation between the front and the back. And this is just looking at it from an orthognathic view, from you know frontal view of the, the plane, looking at it as a two-dimensional two image, you see the 
prop spacing increases very, very quickly as you tilt up, whereas on the tighter X or just the tighter front to back dimension, the prop spacing does not doesn't even separate when you go from zero to when you go from zero there's overlap and then as you go up you don't really get a lot of separation so if I wasn't clear what happens is there is some interaction between how the front disc and the back disc is working and they're interfering with each other so by having this separation you're moving the rear set of props out of the path of the front set of props or you're just removing as the you're reducing the interaction between the two sets of props now there's more than one way to do this but let's just talk about the stretch x with respect to this problem so when you do have separation between these props what you find is that when you punch it you seem to move forward with much less tilt and as you're going around turns you need to play with the pitch less to manage what's going on i'm going to say that again so as you're going, you're flying, you need less tilt because the rear props are more effective at doing their job. You need less tilt to move forward quickly. And as you're going around turns, you don't need to play with the pitch as much to get that nice, you know, turn and power through. It's much easier to manage the pitch as you're flying and it takes less input to fly. But now the argument is, well, a lot of people don't like the stretch X geometry and they think it flies weird. From my testing, I found that the longer dimension with the same rates on the X and the Y actually rotates faster than the shorter dimension. So I'll say that once again. Using the same rates for pitch and roll, the longer direction tends to rotate faster than the shorter direction. So to compensate for that, you can do something like just reduce or increase your pitcher, your pitcher uh, or roll depending on what the geometry of the frame is. On a stretch X, you would either reduce the rate just a little bit, like 0.05, reduce the rate on your pitch or increase the rate on your roll to compensate and make it similar. Or you can do something called the custom mix and beta flight, which nobody really does. I don't know if anybody ever did, but I'm not even going to discuss that. So that is in essence, the dilemma with the stretch X and the true X geometry. But now let's discuss a little bit more in depth and the different and what else you can do to, you know, get the same kind of effect and maintain the control that everybody wants. As I've said in the past, if you're going to race an X, you don't want or race fly, whatever, whatever you're going to do with an X, you don't want a small tight X because of this interaction problem you want a slightly larger X. And this makes a lot of sense because a lot of people prefer six inch frames, six inch frame, and put five inch props on the six inch frame. And they say it flies way better, way different, just overall better. And if you take a look at this, this is a six inch frame and the front to back dimension is massive. It's very similar to the stretch X dimension, as you can see here. And so now it makes a lot of sense why people prefer six inch frames with five inch props. So that's why I recommend if you're going to fly an X, you want a slightly larger X to give you that effect of having a stretch X. And if you want to maintain the X, the X, Y, the pitch and roll and have them use the same rate or whatever, you want an X because that's why people generally want X's. And this is the Floss 2.2, this is the Floss 2 with uh, six inch arms, six inch five millimeter arms. And it's very, very, very close to an X. As you can see, it's, it's maybe just a couple of millimeters longer than it is wide. So very, very close to an X when you put five inch props on it. And this is one of the most preferred setups for some very, very top pilots. But that's not the only discussion. So the other question is, well, if this front to back dimension being wider matters, then why doesn't the side to side direction matter or matter as much at least? And it does matter a little bit, but definitely not as much. So front to, so side to side, the props don't have as much interaction. They're both moving forward. They're both receiving, you know, clean air. And I have tested the X versus the stretch X. And I really find not that drastic of a difference between the two. So I personally prefer a tighter frame. I prefer something smaller so that I don't hit stuff as often, which I, I do all the time. And so I prefer the stretch X. I don't race, but I generally prefer the stretch X, even for acro I prefer it, even though my flow ride frame is not a stretch X, it's actually an H frame, but I'll discuss that in a minute. I prefer the stretch X overall because I like moving quickly and I also prefer lighter quads. And when you have a lighter quad, the dilemma is that you need to pitch up more to go faster because you have a much lighter quad. So it, it doesn't need as much thrust to hold itself up. 
and that's getting into the debate that a heavier quad moves quicker, which I'm not going to get into, but I think it has to do with the RPM of the props and not needing as much pitch to actually move forward quickly. So before I continue, there is one other way to get this kind of separation, and it might be a great compromise for a racing frame, which is moving the rear props just higher than the front props. And there are a couple of frames that do this. They're called a Z geometry or step geometry, whatever you may want to call it. And uh, they do actually feel very, very similar to a stretch X, and they still maintain a very close to X geometry. For acrobatics, they feel a little wonky because when you do rolls and, and uh, flips, they cut, not flips, but rolls, it kind of looks weird in the, just a little weird in the camera, just throws you off a tiny bit. Uh, but for racing, you're not doing rolls and flips so much, and it actually does work out great. The problem with the Z geometry is that I have, I have tried to design it before, and it's, it's a structural, again, a structural integrity problem. Um, having multiple pieces just makes the frame complex. The benefit is really not that massive, and I really personally feel that the Stretch X just performs so similarly that it's it really doesn't have there's really no reason for me to move into that z frame geometry so now let's look at acro frames so with acro frames people have tended to prefer the h style acro frame and that's what my flow ride frame is as well and it's because i i generally actually have more weight on my acro frame so my my acro setups are usually around 580 grams around 600 grams even and that's kind of a lot more than a race race setup it would be at least 100 grams lighter because it doesn't have a gopro on board but the h is actually okay because typically the acro frames or acro setups have more weight and so they don't seem to need as much pitch to skate forward quickly but if you're like me and you prefer lighter setups then having a H frame doesn't quite suit you so well. And not necessarily just the fact that it's an H, just a frame that doesn't have enough separation between front and back. And I did play with this dimension quite a bit on my fluoride frame to get it right, get it to the point where I like with the 600-ish gram weight, all up weight that I tend to prefer to fly with. And that's why it is what it is. But I, I still prefer a lighter setup. I really do prefer, I would love to have a 550 gram with GoPro, everything all up weight acro setup, even 6S, but it's really difficult. But even at 580 grams, which is what I'm usually at, this dimension is still not optimal to be able to fly forward really quickly. And I do like flying really, really fast. So I am designing another acro frame, which is really just experimental. I don't know if it's gonna become like a real big thing, but uh, it's not really as special as this particular, the Flowrite frame, because I really did put a lot of effort into this frame. But I'm gonna be testing it to see if I can get the effect that I want uh, without really affecting the flight characteristics and control. That being said, I'll kind of touch on another topic. This is the Hyper Low frame. This is Rich's design, and he has spent close to, I think, two years now developing this design, and he now has two or three frames out, one with uh, vertical arms and uh, racer and then the acro and then this one, and it's, it's a really, really nice design, and there are definitely at least one very high-profile frames out there that were strongly inspired by his design. And this, this design that he's developed is a very low mount frame, as the name implies, hyper low. So his whole theme is keeping the battery really, really low, having a really low center of gravity while giving you the ability to move the battery wherever you want. So you can see that you can strap the battery underneath, on top, and whatever you want to do. And so what this frame is, is that it's a true X, but it's actually almost as large as a six inch frame. And I've previously discussed in multiple videos that if you have the battery and the GoPro right here in the center and it's right between the blades, you actually do run into a lot of issues because it's blocking a lot of thrust. Thrust doesn't just come off the props straight down, it actually comes off sideways as well as, as a, in like a cone shape. And when you have this big solid mass in the middle, it's actually causing problems because the, the thrust is blowing directly into the battery and it's making the prop feel like it's in more of a static situation. It doesn't let the prop properly unload. It doesn't let it to just freely release all of its thrust and not have to you know, fight the force of knocking the thrust into something else and having it bounce back into. That's why my Flowrite frame has this height to it and, and the, the top plate is completely above the prop line. So the props actually can unload through the frame. And people that have tried skirts on frames like the Alien or like this frame have, well, may have realized that their yaw goes out the window, their punch is kind of lacking, their control is a little bit dull. And that's what you get when you get, when you try to have a very low mount tight X frame. And so the Hyperlow is a larger X frame, 
which kind of goes around the whole issue. And I believe the remix frame is also a slightly larger frame. And what that does is just moves the props further away from the solid mass in the middle and frees them up and allows them to unload a little bit easier. I personally prefer tighter frames and that's why I have my battery raised above. And um, yeah, so that's, that's my rationale for that. And so this once again goes with that idea that if you want to fly an X or a true X, you probably want a slightly larger setup for a multitude of reasons, but for racing primarily, it's because you get that effect of having the Stretch X. And I kind of discussed a whole bunch of topics in this video, and um, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions. I have not gone through a whole lot of detail regarding each topic. I just really wanted to share this because it's given me validity with all the, the thoughts and ideas that I've developed over the past couple of years, designing frames and testing a whole bunch of things. And so we are going to be offering uh, a very close to X um, new style frame, the, the Dragana frame that has been kind of hyped now, which is really going to be anticlimactic when it comes out. But uh, it, will, it will be offered in a limited supply of an X style, a larger X geometry but I personally don't feel like that's the right choice. I personally feel that the longer geometry is what I would personally run, although I'm not a racer. You can fly whatever you want. And uh, yeah, that's it. I hope this was very helpful. And I uh, hope you guys learn from this, those that are designing their own frames, those that are doing their own DIY stuff. It's, it's really, I mean, I'm just trying to share what I've learned over all my experimentation and hope that it helps somebody. Um, don't forget to floss, as you saw at the beginning of the video. <laughs> floss. <laughs> and have a good day. Bye.